So in this video, I'm going to be looking at stacking context and problems that you can come across with Z index. And doesn't always come up for everyone, but here I've used Z index to layer things the way you'd expect them to layer, and they didn't quite work out as you'd expect. So if I click on this modal, you can see my modal is working. It's sort of coming up on top, but wait, my navigation, which is a fixed navigation, is stuck there. But if you come and look at my CSS, my nav has a Z index of 1000, and my modal, which let's scroll all the way down, it takes a while to get there, has a Z index of just a really big value. But my navigation is still on top of this. And to make it even more bizarre, if I click through these, or if I go to my first one, we can really see it. All of these items are actually on top of my modal for this. And that's just really weird. And my navigation obviously is still on top as well. So if you've ever run into an issue like this where your Z indexes just aren't working the way you'd expect them to, or you're watching this and you're going, how the heck is that actually happening? Uh, well, this video is just for you. Hi, my name is Kevin and here on my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with a new video every single week. Before we dive into this video though, I'll be saying Z a lot. Some people say Z, I'm Canadian, we say Z, so Z index. If you like Z, you can stick with Z index, no problem at all. The other thing is you might be wondering where the next part of the SVG series is. It is still going to come out. I'm just putting a little bit of a delay on it. I haven't had as much time to work on it as I'd like. Um, because I've been on vacation, so this is something that I'd sort of prepared a long time ago but never actually used because I didn't know what to do for the last example, but now I got that figured out. So I'm going to do this for now. Once my vacation's done, we'll continue on with the SVG series once I can properly um, sink some real time into it and prepare it the way I'd like to. If you don't know what I'm talking about the SVG series, if you have any interest in SVG, I'd encourage you to go check that out. With all that out of the way, CSS stacking context. What is it and what's the deal with it? And it's something that not many people know about, but it's really important when it comes to understanding the whole Z index thing. And the other issue I have with it is there's a lot of websites out there that have stuff on stacking context, but they don't give a realistic example. So that's sort of why I want to wrap things up. We'll be coming back to this um, which is more of a real world thing. In the meantime, I'll be using uh, the typical examples just so we can understand really what's happening and then we can look at the real world example and different sort of why that actually happened once we know the theory and different ways you can look at, at fixing these types of issues. So CSS stacking context is what controls the order that things will stack on top of one another. The thing is, different things create new CSS contexts, and that can cause really big issues to happen like we just looked at. Here, if we just look at this, I, I, you know, which one of these has the biggest Z index value? And you'd assume it's the red one, because the red one is on top of everything else. And that's not actually the case here. Um, so if we look at my HTML uh, up here, let's I'll reveal that to you now. We have uh, box one, box two, and box three. And box three, which is the purple one, is actually the one with the highest Z index value. So if we go and look at that, box three has a Z index of 100, two has a Z index of one, and box one only has a Z index of two. So the whole idea of Z index is it's sort of like layering. And I'm assuming you, you sort of understand a little bit of what that is. So here, if I take my two and I make that three, it gives it a higher layer. So my box two, which is the green one, goes on top. And my box three is inside of that. So it's layering on top of that one. And also its Z index is really big. Um, so it's sitting on top of my green one there. Um, I'm gonna take box three here and move it outside of box two. So we just have each one on its own. And now it's gonna behave. Uh, and of course, let's just on my box three here, I'm gonna change my margin top from a positive to a negative, just so it's on top. Um, and now it's going to behave a little bit more like how you'd expect it to. Um, let's put this back to a 1. So you have the green one has the lowest Z index value, so it's all the way in the back. The next one, box 1, has the Z index of 2, so it's coming up on the next level. And then I have my Z index of 100, so that's coming up all the way on top of everything else. This is how we're used to using Z index. And if you've never actually played around with Z index, one thing that's important um, usually where you start applying it is if you put a position on it. If you don't have a position on something, you'll notice the Z index isn't working. This is, it's useless. It's not doing anything right now. So if I undo a few things here and I get, and let's come back over to here. And so um, here where we had it, where 
the red one is on top, even though my box three has a Z index of 100. Um, the reason this is happening is stacking context. So what we're looking at is we pretty much have these two. I have a box one and a box two because these are siblings of one another. So my box one and my box two are siblings. So box one has the Z index of two and box two has a Z index of one. So box two is going below box one. Because box two is below box one, that means this, the green box, is below my red box, which makes sense. But that also means everything that's inside of this is also going to be below the red box. I can't break out of that. This is the, the whole idea of a stacking context. Everything inside of my box too, or my green box here, is locked into this sort of place. It can't escape outside of that. So the fact that this green box is below the red box means everything inside of this is also below my red box here which can be kind of weird and kind of confusing, but it does make sense that these, my box three here, it's stuck inside of this. So it can't break outside and all of a sudden go on top of box one. So what's happening with this is um, the Z index value itself is creating a new stacking context. Um, it's not the position relative, it's not the, uh, or if you're using things like position fixed and all of that, they don't create a stacking context. It's when you have the position and you give it a Z index value that creates the new stacking context for to happen, uh, which is really important to understand. It's the Z index itself causing, it's putting a Z index value on it that is creating the stacking context or creating a new stacking context. That's not always the case though. Some There's other ways of creating a stacking context and of allowing you to even to use Z index. Um, so I have this set of examples here, and this one will run through kind of quickly. Um, so I have my box four, which is my pink one. Box five is my orange one. And box six here is my blue one. And what's interesting here is if I come on to this, and I already set it all up, but if I have a transform here and I turn it off, you'll see that, or I turn it off, I uncomment it so it turns on. Um, this transform has actually created a new stacking context. So now this orange box is going on top of the other ones. Even though I'm not using something like position or Z index, I'm not putting a Z index on it, but this transform has set up a new stacking context. And if I come onto box six and I put an opacity on there, oh, look at that. Even though it's at 99%, so it's like as close to one as you can get, that creates a new stacking context and it pulls it up ahead again. Interestingly, if I do an opacity of one, that doesn't affect it. The opacity of one doesn't do anything. It has to be any value lower than one uh, for it to actually have an effect, which is kind of weird in itself. Um, but you can see that now that the blue box is actually on top of that one. Um, and if I come onto this and I do Z index, Um, my Z index works. So it's not just the position properties, position relative, position absolute, position fixed. It's as soon as you apply a new, uh, a new stacking context to something that Z index can now be applied. There are a whole bunch of different things that create new stacking contexts. I'm not going to run through all of them because many of them you probably haven't even heard of, but I'm going to link to the MDN article down below where you can get the full list of things that do actually create it. The ones that you will know though are the position absolute, relative, fixed, and sticky, um, as well as uh, if you're using Flexbox at all, when you apply Flexbox, you can control the Z index of the children of the, the parent element. So that creates new stacking contexts, the opacity like we just saw, as well as the transform like we just saw. As I said, there's a bunch of other ones as well. So if you want to see what those are, you can check out the, the link below. Um, so the realistic example, and what I really want to get to is this one, because it's not something that you run into on a regular basis, but it is quite possibly something that you run into. Now I have gone a little bit above and beyond and made this a little bit contrived just to make it work to the extreme a little bit, which is why if I click on this first one, all the other ones are still on top of it, which is really, really weird. Um, um, and I've also made a mistake here with my modal. So the fact that I can open a whole bunch of modals and because I could now, I can't click on these ones, but um, because as I'm 
going through these, the fact that I can these are on top of my other modal, I can just sort of keep layering all my modals on top of each other, which is terrible. Um, so it creates a lot of problems. And I'm not saying you will run into this, but I think this is it has a few possibilities of things that you might do. Uh, so let's check what they are. Um, so if we look at the markup really fast in this, and the code pens for these are uh, down below for sure. And actually, if you want to just check it out right now, you can go to that right here, codepen.io slash, uh, well, you can see it right there with the capitals and everything I think are required. Uh, and if you don't want to, you can just follow the link down below. So here I have my navigation up at the top. Um, I have a hero, which is just this thing with the text in it right there. And then I have a portfolio. So each one, I have six portfolio items. So I've put those in, I've commented those in portfolio item one, two, three, etc. They're all exactly the same as one another. So each portfolio item is a figure. Um, and the, so I have my image, which is there, a short description. So this description is explaining a little bit of what my portfolio item is. And then I have this button and my button, if I click on it, opens up this modal right here. And then I, of course, in my modal, let's open this one so we can see it. Some more content, I have a little paragraph and then I can hit my close me and actually close it off right there, which is just another button. Cool, so if I look at um, the CSS and the reason issues are happening here, and of course I have this other little about text here, which is just, I went for this kind of look where we're overlapped on the top here and overlapped on the bottom there. Um, and that was very much on purpose to get everything in here working. Um, so for my navigation, I very purposefully set this to a position fixed. Um, so here I did position fixed and I gave it a pretty big Z index of 1000 because I want it to be on top of everything on my site. So you'd, a lot of time what you do is you just give it a really big Z index value. So as I'm scrolling, that's staying on top of everything else on my page, which is exactly what I want and why I'm giving this the large Z index. Now, when I come through and look at the rest of this, let's go find my portfolio. Um, what I've done is I've given my portfolios items, which is each one of these items here. That's one item, two item, three item, four item. I've given a position of relative and a Z index of one. And the reason I gave these a Z index of one is because I sort of did a bad idea down here on the bottom, um, which is my about. And to get my about underneath here is I used a transform on it to sort of pull it upwards. Um, which is a totally valid idea, except it would potentially cause some issues lower down if I had more content. Um, so just to show you, if I didn't put that Z index on there, what would happen is, well, this is on top of that stuff, which is no good, right? That's going to cause a major issue. So that happened. So I'm like, oh man, I need to put a Z index on there. And that pulled all of this in front. Now, the problem with this having a Z index on it is this is what's causing all of the issues here, pretty much. Um, as soon as I gave this Z index on here, it created the new stacking context. And that's why this is on top of uh, this stuff here. Because if I look down, my modal itself has that gigantic Z index. So this should be on top of everything. It should just be like, whoop, it's going all, all the way up. But um, as soon as I gave this a Z index of one, this gave it a new stacking context. All of my modals are inside of each item. So this item is below my navigation because my navigation has a Z index of a thousand. So no matter what I do, the children of this item can never be on top of that anymore because this item is below this. So it could have literally a Z index of infinity as a child, it's never going to get on top of uh, this right here. If I turn this Z index off, this obviously pops back on top here. But now if I click on that, at least my modal is on top of everything else. You see, you can see my modal is coming and actually covering everything and it's working the way I'd want it to. The problem is coming from uh, this big issue right there. Um, one thing that it doesn't solve the issue completely, but it probably be a better option would be for the, if you're going to have to position relative and a Z index potentially on the portfolio itself, instead of having it on the portfolio item. Now what that would fix is at least now 
I can click on these and you can see that it's working much, much, much better. And it's still on top of this because I've taken, let's just shrink all of these down so we can see things a little easier. Okay, so I've taken my portfolio item instead of this having the Z index on it. So instead of each one of these having its own stacking context, I've given only the big parent here its own stacking context. So before what was happening is each one of these had its own stacking context. So even if this has a child that was 9999, it would be below all of this stuff. Whoops, it would be below all of this stuff because it was in this one right here. So that was causing uh, a lot of those issues or that weird issue anyway, of the, um, you know, the modal being behind these other items. So now the, the stacking context is linked directly to this portfolio, the whole portfolio parent, instead of each individual uh, figure that I have set up. So that helps uh, in just making it so at least this works. If that doesn't bother you and you don't mind your navigation being on top, because people probably aren't scrolling right now, it's not the end of the world, but it's still far from ideal. So really, uh, what we need to do in this case, if ever you ran into a situation like this, is you'd probably want to actually just find a way to, a different way of doing what I did there. Um, so let's take this Z index off, because again, that, that's an issue. But at least now when I open it, it's covering everything like I'd want to do. I'd want to click on that, and then it covers the entire screen. So here, instead of using a transform, which we learned creates a new stacking context, we could do something else, like say a margin top of negative 10 M. It should give us the same result, but it's not creating a new stacking context like my translate Y was doing. So it solves that problem. And because I've changed my other values on here, you can see that my modals are working just fine. Um, so a bit of a contrived one in the sense that I went sort of and grabbed a whole bunch of stuff to try and make as many problems as I could. But it's definitely one of these things is definitely something that could come up along the way at one point, especially the, the idea of maybe one of these having a Z index on it for some reason and it just causing at or havoc uh, on like a modal system or something like that. So I hope this helped you. If you ever have run into an issue with stacking context, I'd love to hear about it down below. And I really hope this has helped you out. I hope you found this video interesting. Of course, if you have, please hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. A big thank you to my patrons for helping support this channel and helping to make these videos possible for everybody out there. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.